Hi everyone, welcome back to LaTeX. Today we're going to cover the basics of LaTeX. We're going to include bulleted lists and sections. So we might even get around to creating a table or two. Let's go ahead and get started. If you've been watching any of the other series, then you've seen that we've been working on APA version style, style seven, version seven there. And there are a lot of options whenever you do something like that. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and give an example of what it looks like. And I'm gonna grab these options here. So I'm gonna grab a couple of these options. And I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't use APA version seven, and you just wanna go out and create a research paper. So over here, we're not going to do APA 7, we're going to do an article. Now, there are several different article formats, and some of the best ones are Elsevier or Elsevier, and uh, we'll look at what that entails in maybe a future lesson. Right now, we're going to cover just a basic article. So that man right there, we're going to take that out for a manuscript. And then these packages here, we do not need these packages anymore, so we can get rid of those. I am gonna keep uh, these packages right there. So we got the ray, the fancy verb, graphics X, verbatim, and I might even use full page, but what I'll do is I'll put use package and the uh, full page option here, and I'll comment that out. And I'll comment out our bib resource right now too. Uh, so we're not gonna be using bibliography. Now this course and everything else there, so we've got a title, the title of our document, the short title affiliation and left header. If you know, we go, notice we go through and we say build this, it's in a basic article. It's like, what are you talking about? A short title, affiliation, left header. What, what is this? That's not part of this article. So we're gonna have to go through and remove those because those options are not supported. Now, of course, title and author are supported. And we will also have an abstract that's often supported. Now let's get rid of these comments. We can comment. And now let's go through and begin the document and just go through and begin document, end document, there we go. And we're gonna choose build right there. And it's like, yeah, I built it, there's nothing there, so I had nothing to build. So over here we'll say, this is content, period. And we'll build that and you'll see it appeared right over here. This is content. We did not make the title. So the title of the paper uh, did not come up. So I'll go over here and I'll choose backslash make title, just like that. And when I do that, you'll see that now we have a title of the paper. We have our name, a date, and the content, and you see a page number at the bottom. All that right here, everything uh, like the begin, make title, document, all that you can copy from whichever you wanna go to, and it's very simplistic. So just get used to copying this. Just go copy this and copy it to every document you use, and uh, then just change your, your title and author until it were to begin a document. Well, in this case, we want to create, let's say, let's say we want to do a, a section here. We do a section and we'll say this is an introduction and we're going to have a subsection and I'll just say this is the intro and I'll do a subsection. How do you do that? You just type subsection and we'll say, and we'll say uh, another section, right? And if you need a sub subsection, I bet you can't figure out what that is. It is, it's sub subsection. How can it possibly get easier? It can't. I'll just call this a sub sub section right there. This is text. And I'm gonna put the uh, Ipsum package in here, which is Lipsum, Lorem Ipsum. And that way you can just go throw it in there. So we'll put this Lipsum like that. And then for each of these, yes, yes, that's it. Okay, and then for each of these, I'll go ahead and put the lip sum, and we'll say uh, just one paragraph each. So I'll throw one paragraph in each section. There, just like that. Now if I build it, we'll get to see what it looks like. So now we have their introduction, we have another section, you notice this is a lot better than APA version seven. It's just much neater. Um, you can follow it for a research paper uh, using APA version seven. 
I, I won't go too harsh on it, um, but I just can't imagine it being a good research paper style. Um, but over here, we do have some great, great style here. So we do have the, uh, this is content there. Let me get rid of that. There, get rid of, this is content, yes. Uh, we'll take that out right there. And now we've got our introduction, another section and sub sub section right there. So beautiful, just like that. If you wanna put it on a different page, you can imagine that you just do backslash new page and now you've got a new page and we'll just go look at that and look at that it put it on a new page that's great but we have mentioned that we want to get over to doing something we're going to take out lip sum here we're going to do an a list on here as well as sections so how do we do an itemized list well one of the option is begin enumerate okay enumerate right there now, oh wow, it went ahead and put item there. So we'll just say this is a one, I'll put a backslash, item, two, and I'm just putting spaces in here. It It is uh, tabbing it for me automatically. And then you see the end enumerate. Remember, if you ever have a beginning, you must have an end. So be sure you put the beginning and the end. And what does that look like? Right there, that's what that looks like. One, two, and three. Now, if you're thinking, wow, that is just spread out too far, you can change the vertical spacing. So the vertical spacing is easily changed, and it's something I usually do. So I usually change the vertical spacing for any of my bulleted lists. Let me see if I can get around the right place. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and try that V space right there inside of enumerate. Never done that way before. Let's see if that works. No, it does not work. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, over here, right before you start your enumeration, go ahead and put that V space and wait, hold on. That's not where we want that at all. No, 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 no. That's that's the wrong option. We don't want that. We don't want to go through and uh, we do want to change the vertical spacing of all of those, but we want to do it for the entire, entire section. And the vertical spacing just changes your vertical spacing between whatever you're looking for. So what we're looking for is item sep, item separation, um, and we want to give it a, a specif specification on there, like how far we want to go. So um, let's say zero. We'll say zero em. So we'll do that, and we're going to do that. Let's do that inside of enumerate, right here. Bing, that looks right. There we go. That looks very correct. Let me go through and click make that. And now we've got that going on. So if we uh, we take that item separation, we move it up or whatever we want to change it to, you can see it grows or it shrinks based on uh, what we do with our item separation. So in this case, I think zero is probably a good option. If you want to see what it looks like without that, you can comment it out and just do it again you'll see that these enlarged a little bit. They separate out a little bit more. And in fact, let's pull this up just a little bit there. And I'll go through and put this back on and then we'll regenerate. Hopefully it'll stay in the same place. There we go. So you can see kind of how that item separation changes things. Now that's an enumerated list. Next, let's say we have a bulleted list. So how would we create that? So first of all, we have change the word from a room a, a enumerate there to itemize so we're going to change this to itemize and once we change that word to itemize look at that it changed the end automatically yeah, let me get rid of that it changed the end automatically so it did that automatically for us just remember if you are doing this in a plain text editor you do need to begin and end what you do there so let's go ahead and recreate this and you'll notice now it's a bulleted list now even better, we can do descriptions. So let's say we have a description here. The description, what that does is it allows us to give words. So we'll say like, uh, oh yeah, sure, we'll just go one. Then we'll tab over and say uh, description for this one. I'll just say for, just for this. I'm gonna copy that over for each one just to save us some time. Just like that. And now, we have description, look at that. It changed the ending automatically. Tech Studio is incredible. All right, let's do that. And you see this one, two, and three. 
we have the descriptions sitting there next to each one of those. So we have the uh, description there. I have some tabs in here. If I do like five tabs, it will fix it for me and it will always put it in the right place. So that is great. Now, um, if we have, let's say, one, two, three there. So we have that right there. And we have a long word, that one, two, three. Then it pops the description right over there next to it. And it does that for us. Now let's say, well, actually what we want is a table. Well, tables are actually pretty easy to do in LaTeX as well. If you ever want to create a table, there are some websites that you can go to to create the table, or you can just go through and type, you know, create a table. So we'll want to, uh, whenever you create a table, you will want to have your information ready beforehand. So you'll want to have, for instance, the columns and the rows defined, and you'll want to know what you're putting there. So let's go ahead and we're going to create a table here and show you what it looks like. So for a table, I'll actually just do it underneath there. We're going to use tabular. So we're going to say begin tabular, and we're going to tell it that we want a line on the outside. We want it centered for the first column there, centered in the second column, centered in the third column, and we want lines in between there and a line at the end. We can also do a backslash H line there to give a horizontal line inside of the table, or we can just kind of skip that if you'd like to. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, so over here we've got our H line there. Now we're going to go ahead and put our, now this is going to be the header over each column. So we'll just call this uh, column one. To separate it, I'm going to use an ampersand. And then I'm going to say column two. Ampersand, and we only have three, so I'm going to say column three, just like that. Now in the last one, I'm not going to use an ampersand because that's the end. We're going to use a backslash backslash. The backslash backslash means end that line. If we want a horizontal line in between those, we can do a horizontal line. Then we can put content. So we'll just I'll just do content and uh, ampersand, and I'll copy that over. It's gonna be a pretty generic table. <laughs> All right, so we've got content, and we have content over here. Backslash backslash. And I'll go ahead and put another H line in there. And we'll do some more content. And content and content with the two lines there, an H line. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to end uh, tab, tab, nice, tabular, just like that. All right. So we have a beginning and our end. I'm going to go ahead and build that. Let's see what it looks like. And sure enough, there we are. We have our columns and we have our content. Notice everything is nice and centered. Looks great. We have that. And of course, there are several options with this. We're just giving us, uh, just giving you the very basics of how to do some simple things right here in LaTeX. Now, the final thing that you might want to do is insert a graphic. You want to have a picture. So well, let's go ahead and insert a picture. So to insert a graphic in LaTeX, there are a bunch of options, and I'm gonna give you my default options that I use when I'm putting graphics into LaTeX, and we'll also look at labeling uh, for figures. So if you're writing this for a research paper, chances are that you might wanna go through and you're gonna to want to do figures. So we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, well, we need to begin a figure here, and we're gonna use these options, right? That exclamation HTTPP, uh, that uh, exclamation HTTP right there is going to center that thing. It's going to throw it in the middle. It's going to throw it at the top, and it's going to put everything all together for us. So, those uh, those letters specifically indicate that we do not want the exclamation says negate. If you're into programming at all, you know the exclamation means uh, kind of uh, don't do. And so, what we're saying is here top bottom and page that's uh here top bottom and page and so we're saying just ignore that and put it here put it inside my figure thing and uh that's the kind of uh that's the kind of option what we're, we're going to give it there so we're just telling it put it right here um, and we can tell it to center it because we want it to center the graphic i'm just going to use a picture of tux um, so i'm going to put um, centering in this uh, for a figure and let's put a caption in there because your your figures will need captions. And let's go ahead. And it will automatically 
you know, I'll say a uh, picture of Tux like this. Um, and it will automatically label the figures too. But for labels, when you put a label in there, this is a, allows you to go find it inside the text. So in this case, I'll call this a figure and I'll say Tux. And I'll just put that in. That way I can refer to it inside the document. Then finally, I'm going to say include graphics. I'm going to tell it that I want it to use. Oh, let's use the entire line width. So we're going to say use the entire line width. Now you can go through and use half line width or quarter line width or whatever you want to use. Um, and then we're going to give it a uh, the actual path to this. So this is going to be me. Pictures. Is it Tux? It's P and G, I think. Let me go verify where Tux is really fast. And I will get right back to you. Okay. Oh, Poteet. Pictures. Capital P and Pictures. Can't believe I did that. And a capital T and Tux right there. So we got that. And then over here, we need to end the figure. So end. Remember, everything that you begin, you need to end. It has been really good about ending that automatically. Okay, so let's do that and press build. Let's see what happens. And there you go. You got a picture of Tux. And it's right in the middle of the page. And we have that figure right above that uh, where it's labeled. We can, uh, we can put that probably wherever we want. Um, depends on what your style is. If you're using Elsevier or Elsevier, um, IEEE or whatever it might be, you'll need to uh, you'll need to do that the right way. So there it is. But that's including a graphic. So there you go. A couple of options we looked through today. I'll try to copy these into the description so you'll get all of these options. Uh, did I remove enumerate? I did remove enumerate. Let me go through and put enumerate and itemize in here. So right here, I'll just say. Uh, begin, enumerate, like that, item, test, and then over here we'll do the begin, itemize, over here, uh, item, uh, test, like that, and we'll go in, end, itemize, like this. Okay, super. Uh, there's something else we should discuss. And that is with subsections. So I'm going to say a sub subsection here. We can also label those so we can get to them. But if we put an exclamation, I'm sorry, an asterisk after the sub subsection, then it will not number it. So if we go over here and we look at this and we see the sub subsection that shows up there now, you can't see it. That sub subsection no longer has a number. If we take the asterisk off right there, just do that and rebuild it then you'll see it comes up as 112. Um, anywhere you put a an asterisk, so if we go over here to the subsection and put this here, and build that, then it's going to go back over and it's going to take the numbering out of that. That could be very useful if you just need to label a paragraph. You can go ahead and do that right there. Now, of course, we do have a table of contents um, option in there. So we can insert a uh, table of contents, table of figures, and other things as well. All right, so we don't have a whole lot of contents here, <laughs> but let's go ahead and do it anyway. Um, right there where we have the uh, begin document, we can go ahead and put in a table of contents there and make that. And you'll see that the table of contents popped up. You're probably going to want that on a new page. So I'm going to put new page right there. And I'll put a new page after that. New page after that right there. And I'll rebuild that. And so now we have our title. We have our contents, as you can see right there. And then we have this. We can also have a list of figures. So over here, we can have backslash list of uh, figures like this. And let's go ahead and do this and do a backslash uh, list of tables like that. And I'll go ahead and create those. And so you can see the list of figures and list of tables that came up. New page. And I'll put a new page after each one of these. New page. There we go. 
And let's build that. So there's a list of figures right there. We got a picture of Tux and a list of tables. We have no tables whatsoever. And the reason we don't have any tables is we actually do have a table, don't we? Let's see. We do have a table, but we didn't label it as such, did we? So we did not label our our table. So how do we label a table in LaTeX? So um, if we want to label our tables, which we then we need to tell it that it is a table. So over here, we're going to have to go over and say, all right, begin, begin, table. And we can do centering in there, centering like that. And we can actually, uh, after we do that, we can go through and say, we want a caption on this table. We can do a top or bottom. Uh, notice that I'm using the braces when I go through and do this. And we'll just say this is a demo table uh, demonstration. Sure, not nah, just demo table, demo table. This is getting a little bit long, so I want to finish this for you as fast as possible. And then we can go through and do a label as well. We'll do a label. And I like to keep these as easy as possible to reference. So figures are F-I-G, tables are, well, T-A-B, et cetera. So, and uh, let's go through and do that right there. Let's see if it ended my table. It did not, so I'm gonna go over here. Remember, if you begin something, you have to end it. So be sure you end your table there. And make sure that we ended everything. Oops, I already had the end. Not good, <laughs> there we go. Make sure that we end everything appropriately. Now you see that in the list of tables, the demo table pops up and we have information on the table. We have the demo table listed there. Now on this, we have figure one below it. We have this above it. Generally speaking, you're probably gonna have to label things above them. So this is a pretty long one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it, copy this into the description for you. And I look forward to seeing you next time.